We will now begin the Copyright Office's 10th Copyright Modernization Webinar. During the program, attendees may submit questions using the, using the Q&A panel accessed by clicking the Q&A icon at the bottom of the Zoom screen. We will answer questions after the presentations are complete. However, we may not answer all of those questions due during the webinar. First, please welcome our new Register of Copyrights, Shira Perlmutter. Thank you, Ananda. I'm honored to be joining the United States Copyright Office during its 150th anniversary year. This has been a landmark year for the office as we celebrate creativity and move forward with modernization. A lot has already happened on the modernization front across all of our services, ranging from development that has begun on a new registration system to release of our first ever electronic interface for recording and transferring copyrights. As modernization continues, there will continue to be more exciting developments to share with you. Today, Paul Capel, section head for the Copyright Office Records Management section, will be introducing you to our new interim warehouse. He will explain why this warehouse is critical to the office's mission of preserving important copyright records and making them accessible and we'll describe how it lays the groundwork for a state-of-the-art warehouse management system. Hello, everybody. I'm Paul Capel. I'm the records management section head in the Office of Public Records and Repositories. The history of the copyright deposit storage. Uh, we have been at the Landover, Maryland warehouse facility since 1977. That's a pretty long time even in library years. The Landover facility is busy with an average uh, increase of 20,000 new boxes coming in annually. And that's been going on over the past five years that we've had that type of volume. But we need more space and functionality. While this warehouse has served us well over that period of time, uh, we realized uh, some time ago that we were gonna need a new warehouse. And back in 2017, the leadership launched a multi-year preparedness program to inventory Landover's more than 60,000 boxes at the time and to consider new storage options. We're now well on our way to a storage solution, including opening a new state-of-the-art interim storage facility. As a matter of fact, as we speak, that warehouse is being moved into now, the new warehouse. Let's take a peek inside the Landover warehouse. I mentioned that uh, we'd been there for a long time. So that means that we have limited storage space. We have an upper and lower deck and combined that equals out to about one and a half stories high. And uh, we have low reach shelving, which is good in one respect, but uh, after a period of time, uh, you're gonna run out of space. And Landover has been at full capacity for the last 10 to 15 years. And we've had to accession materials from time to time as part of space reclamation projects to make room for new incoming deposits annually. Manually tracking chain of custody of deposit copies. What you see the inventory technicians doing here is actually inventorying each deposit to make certain that we know where they are when we need them so that whenever a retrieval request comes in, we can easily access them. And this is an ongoing process that we do all the time. So inventorying the 60,000 boxes at the time uh, a few years ago was part of a regular routine of inventory that we do to, check to track chain of custody. The space reclamation I mentioned, this is where you actually take boxes off of the shelves and we accession those out to offsite contract storage providers to make uh, room for the inbound uh, ongoing deposits that we get uh, every day. Sometimes we ship over between one and three pallets a week to this warehouse and each box can contain between four and 600 deposits. So that translates into millions of deposits that we're archiving and warehousing, and we have to be able to maintain a chain of custody because you never know when you're gonna be asked to retrieve either one of those. Moving forward, preparing to, for the move. The Copyright Office uh, partnered with the architect, architect of the Capitol and other in-house subject matter experts. And we started planning uh, back in 2017 what would it take to move into a new warehouse? There were ideation sessions and leadership and every section head and uh, end users, stakeholders got a chance to sit in on these sessions and 
put forth uh, what they thought would be wise as a requirement to put into a new warehouse. And of course, if you're going to move, you have to inventory, know what you're moving. So you know what you have on the other side. So if you just bear with me for a moment and think about the last time you moved from one house to another, and you probably came across some things that you could discard, some things you might donate out or some things you say, well, no, this is not going to the new house. Well, in our world in copyright, you can't do that. We keep some materials up to 120 years. So we had to plan very carefully to move every single deposit copy. The inventory project, uh, part of the inventorying uh, those boxes, uh, it morphed. It went from 60,000 to over 88,000 boxes. And we engaged in a multi-year move preparedness project that got us to where we are now, where we're actually moving into the warehouse as we speak. Work continued during the pandemic. How do you build a warehouse when you have an unforeseen occurrence like a pandemic? Well, it certainly helped that Governor Larry Hogan of Maryland deemed construction work essential. And I can report to you that the warehouse construction went on uh, uninterrupted and without any incidents of COVID illness during the whole period that the six or seven months that the work stoppage was in place for most other industries and uh, many government agencies. Back in March 2019, the property owner broke ground to build a 40,000 square foot warehouse for the United States Copyright Office. It was literally, literally a hole in the ground. Uh, you see some walls that were erected on site. That was quite a thing to see. Uh, they weren't trucked in on the truck and then put up. They were actually erected there on site and you see the stabilizing bars. And we'll talk a little bit more about that floor that you see partially developing. Uh, that's a key part to our success and county code approvals for the type of shelving that we're currently using in this new warehouse, state-of-the-art shelving. Here's the floor again. You see that rebar? Uh, you could look at that and very casually say, well, it's just a floor. What's, what's interesting about that? Well, we have special design high-reach shelving that are three stories high, and you need what the county refers to as a super flat floor. That rebar helps us achieve that uh, balance. So if there were a shift of the ground underneath, the floor would remain solid. So that means these three-story high shelving wouldn't teeter. If you've ever seen an old episode in a movie where you see in a library and the uh, stacks begin to tilt and they go down like dominoes, that won't happen here because of the science and technology that's been invested in this. Very carefully thought through by the designers and the architects and the engineers. Here's a glance of the warehouse in its finished state now. Uh, it's a lot like driving onto a military base. It's a gated uh, warehouse community. You drive up to a security station, and if you don't have business there, a legitimate business, you just can't go in and wander around and say, what are you doing in here? Uh, that's a uh, building on the right is the corner view of 1519 Cabin Branch, and that's where the new deposit copy storage unit will be for the United States Copyright Office. This is where you walk in the front door that you just saw in the other uh, image. And uh, that's a reception area. That's where you'd be greeted and uh, you would be assisted and somebody would escort you to the space or to the person that you're visiting with uh, while you're on site there. Here's a glance that I thought would be nice to show you. This is the business end of the processing when we bring things in uh, from offsite locations or they come down from Capitol Hill Madison building. To, they're processed here and prepared before they're given shelf assignments out in the storage bay. Now there's a lot of construction type materials in these images, but this is actually the loading dock. All that's cleared up now and uh, it's actively receiving inbound shipments from Landover facility over to the new cabin branch facility. And they're actually being uh, given shelf assignments to deposit copy boxes, uh, even as we speak, that's going on right now. So far to date, we've moved about 18,000 boxes. That's the high base shelving that I was telling you about. And if you look at the image on the right, uh, you can see that's very tall. It's even out of the picture frame there, but it goes up approximately three stories high. And we actually give shelf assignments or we assign shelf assignments from the top down to the bottom. They're linked to the barcode on the shelf and the barcode on the box. And we're able to go and find the deposits we need uh, upon request when we get retrieval requests. 
This warehouse is centrally located and it's less than 25 miles from the Capitol campus on a secure 24 hour guarded business park, as I mentioned. Uh, this is uh, one of the things that was one of the requirements that came out of the ideation sessions back in 2017. We wanted it very close or in relatively close proximity to the uh, to the Capitol campus and it's really only about three miles from the older warehouse that we're moving from. This warehouse is environmentally enhanced and meets federal records for storage guidelines. And we partnered with the uh, preservation folks and uh, they presented us some uh, temperatures that we should maintain a shoot for. And uh, the temperature in the storage bay is maintained at 65 degrees to 71 degrees. And there's a relative humidity of between 40 and 50%. Now this technology is, it's, it's a huge improvement over what we had at the uh, Landover facility. We have uh, sensors that would uh, indicate if those temperatures drop or vary in any way, alarms would go off, even if it's two or three o'clock in the morning, someone would be notified that the architect of the Capitol, copyright uh, leadership, uh, staff management would be notified and there would be a person to respond to it immediately so that we maintain temperature, which will extend the life of the deposits uh, that we store there. Uh, remember, we said that we keep some things up to 120 years. So that's maintaining shelf life, so to speak. It's sort of like if you open the refrigerator door and you lose temperature, you lose shelf life. So we're maintaining a consistent shelf life for our deposits. The office will gain improved efficiencies, such as faster ret retrieval times and next day delivery to authorized requesters. Now, that's huge. It's huge in the respect that it's a nice thing when you think about well, if we store things off site, they're kind of out of sight, out of mind who we need and we just pick up a, fall, a, a phone and call or we send through an email request and they'll get us the box overnight. Well, our experience has been that doesn't always happen that way. It has taken us sometimes up to three weeks to a month to get a box that it's not lost. We never say the word lost in storage, but it would be in the pipeline at an off site storage uh, contract provider and it would be challenging getting it for someone that's looking for a deposit for litigation review, examination, or even a presentation. Uh, we have open houses and a lot of times we'll pull things for presentation. Well, one of the benefits of uh, this new warehouse is we're gonna cut down on that retrieval time measurably, sometimes from two to three weeks to a single day. The office will benefit from enhanced security and enhanced inventory vis visibility. The fact that we're gonna have uh, these deposits under one roof, uh, they're gonna be more accessible. It will enable staff to uh, have a quicker turnaround and it's just gonna be a lot more efficient uh, and we're all eager and excited about that. There are next steps. What do you do after you build a state-of-the-art warehouse? Well, you need a state-of-the-art warehouse management tracking system. A new warehouse management system will enable us to process, control, and optimize warehouse operations by electronically tracking deposits from ingestion to the final retention date and disposition. This is the first step uh, moving from Landover to Cabin Branch uh, for the Copyright Office deposits to be consolidated. Uh, there will be other moves from other offsite uh, storage facilities that will follow this. Copyright will be able to leverage its high base shelving and its environmental conditions. And we will put three times the deposit copies under the roof of this new facility than what we're currently storing at Landover. Thank you. We will now begin the question and answer portion of the program. Attendees can submit questions using the Q&A panel accessed by clicking the Q&A icon at the bottom of the Zoom screen. First question, will the public be permitted to visit the new warehouse and request deposits? No, that was one of the subjects or topics that came up during the ideation sessions and the new interim warehouse does not have a public access. Patrons may still visit the copyright reading room in the Madison building at 101 Independence Avenue. Thank you, Paul. Next question, have missing, lost or misplaced deposit and correspondence materials been found or located during the transitional move? Well, again, I, I don't like to use the word loss, but we do have uh, deposits that are identified and located uh, during the uh, inventory process. We call those Q missings. And as a part of the ongoing uh, 
inventories that we do and cycle counts, we frequently, frequently on a weekly basis, uh, will find a deposit that has been uh, misplaced or misfiled uh, when it came over, or it wasn't put in a proper box or what have you. We're able to update those in the, in the uh, system with the Voyager client and make them accessible and retrievable upon future requests. So the answer to that is yes, we do find them all the time. Thank you, Paul. Uh, can anyone request deposits from the new warehouse? No, that's a good question, though. Uh, deposits are requested the same way as always through routine channels at the Madison building. Access to documents is limited to the owners, their designated representative, and others based on an approval process. So that did not change. All right, Paul. Uh, will the uh, deposit copy storage unit uh, be pulling deposits during the move? Yes, that was one of the things that uh, the leadership and the PR director and I had very uh, direct conversations about. We don't, we did not want to shut down operations because the move is going to take um, 45 days or less, and we're already a week into that move. So we have a very uh, astute tracking process. The inventory was inventoried prior to the move during the preparedness project. It was inventoried and scanned as it crosses the dock, leaving uh, the Landover facility and then it's scanned again, as you saw in the images, as it goes up on the shelf. So we're able to retrieve documents and send uh, through request, uh, doc, uh, deposit copies to requesters on a daily basis. We're not shutting that product down. Thank you, Paul. Um, what steps do you take to prevent fire? And if a fire occurs, is water used? Well, there's a state of the art fire suppression system in place there. And I can tell you that uh, Prince George's County is probably one of the most rigid code uh, systems in the country. And uh, we partnered not only with uh, the county and the architect of the capital in setting up that uh, unique system, but we also brought in uh, the subject matter experts from NARA as part of the build design process. And uh, we're all on the same page. And with the temperatures and the humidity and the uh, fire suppression systems that's in place, uh, there are alarms and there's redundancies that uh, are built into this design to let us know if there's a temperature raise or a temperature fall in any way that would be quickly mitigated. So it's technology driven, but uh, there's a lot of oversight and a lot of monitoring and management uh, on the part of the ar architect of the Capitol who will be managing this building. What's the plan for the rare materials that were held in the cage in Landover? Oh, we have a new cage. That's a good question. You remember that. We uh, have a secure facility there, and uh, that's uh, card reader controlled, and only select management staff have access to that. There's 24-hour uh, cameras there. So that's moved very securely uh, at a point in time uh, during this move process, and it has a new home awaiting for it and new shelf assignments already. We do have some rare and unique pieces. Oftentimes uh, we put some of that on display and uh, that's why the chain of custody is so tracking, uh, chain of custody tracking is so important and uh, that will be very carefully moved on a specific day at some point in the future. With the rise of electronic publishing, are you seeing a relative slowdown in deposits of physical material? Are electronic materials stored on drives in the warehouse alongside print materials? We get both. We have... Uh, a specific session of uh, our class where we, uh, where we store physical deposits. But uh, the rise of electronic uh, deposits, uh, full term or regular electronic deposits, has not outpaced the physical deposits at this point. Uh, that certainly could uh, grow and change in the years. But uh, when you're increasing your, your, your storage capacity by 19 to 20,000 boxes a year, uh, Everything that we do to build up the electronic uh, deposits is going to be a process, but there's still a tremendous amount of physical deposits. And it was one of the reasons why doing the ideation sessions and the studies that were done, it was determined that we would need a new warehouse. Are there plans for another storage facility to be constructed after the cabin branch facility? Yes, there is. Uh, there's not plans that are active on the table right now, but uh, as I mentioned earlier, we were at uh, Cabin, we were at the Landover Warehouse for 43 years. And this warehouse at Cabin Branch is designed to last the library between 25 and 30 years. 
But at some point in the future, uh, the Copyright Office will determine when it's appropriate to build a new warehouse. But we know that this will not be the end of it because our collection is only expected to grow. Copyright matters. And a part of the five-year vision plan is to continue growing our deposits. And storage was a part of the modernization that we all discussed and it was realized that we needed. Um, and that might be uh, related to the earlier question. Why do you refer to the warehouse as an interim warehouse? Well, that is a good question. We refer, refer to it as an interim warehouse because we know that in library years, is 25 to 30 years is really a short period of time. And we know that uh, based on the historical data that we had available to us as we looked at the study that uh, the Landover warehouse had reached its capacity after about 20 to 25 years and we're there about 43 years. So there's going to come a time, a point in time where we're going to need a new warehouse facility. So this is interim in the respect that it's temporary, but temporary will be 25 to 30 years. How long are uh, copyright deposits held? Oh, that's a good question. We keep some copyright departments de uh, deposits up to 120 years. Uh, regular work, 95 years from the year of the first publication or term of up to 120 years for certain creations. Uh, there's uh, various types of work, but uh, between 95 and 120 years. Another question. Uh, in the past, I have experienced long wait times for deposit copies. What are the new service level agreements for de deposit copy retrievals? This is where we really benefit with this new warehouse. The service level agreements will improve uh, measurably. You will experience improved retrieval times once deposits are consolidated from offsite locations to the new warehouse. And we anticipate measured improvements from a couple of weeks uh, now uh, in the, or in the past to a single day in the future. Uh, keep in mind that we're going to be 25 miles or less uh, to the Capitol campus and we have uh, trucks uh, that run back and forth on a daily basis and we have interagency agreements with the uh, logistics services and we're going to be able to improve on that. That's one of the one of the annual performance uh, goals that we're going to be tracking and looking at because we certainly expect a huge improvement in those retrieval times. Are deposit copies for unpublished works treated differently than deposit copies for published works? Yes, unpublished works, uh, we keep those. I mean, uh, you can have a life expectancy or retention uh, period on some published works, but they're out in the public domain. But unpublished works, we keep them through perpetuity. They're going to be with us for a long time. All right, thank you, Paul. That will conclude today's webinar. When you sign out of the session, we encourage you to take part in a brief survey regarding your experience. We use this to improve our webinar program. So your feedback is greatly appreciated. Thank you for your participation today and please join us for the next webinar.